Article 44, uh, on the petition of Experience Hampton, at least 25 registered voters, shall the town of Hampton vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $300,000 for preliminary design services for the reconstruction of Lafayette Road from the area near the intersection of High Street South toward Winnicott Road. The design services would include street, sidewalk, utility, and lighting improvements for the downtown Hampton Village in an effort to revitalize the downtown. The preliminary design would be used to support a future project that has the potential to be funded by the Road Improvement Capital Reserve Fund created under Article 16 of the 1998 Annual Town Meeting in accordance with the provisions of RSA 35 for the purpose of maintenance and or reconstruction of streets. Set appropriation to be offset by a donation by, Hampton, by Experience Hampton estimated to be no less than $30,000. This article is contingent upon the donation of no less than $30,000 from Experience Hampton and the donation's acceptance by the Board of Selectmen. This shall be a non-lapsing appropriation per RSA 32 colon 7 Roman 6 and shall not lapse until the project is completed or by March 31st, 2018, whichever occurs sooner majority vote required. Recommended by the Board of Selectmen 3 to 1, recommended by the Budget Committee 7 to 6. Fiscal impact note, the estimated 2017 tax impact on $300,000 is 9.1 cents per thousand dollars evaluation. Is there a motion to open discussion on Article 44? Moved by Mr. Bridal, is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Nyan. Mr. Nyan, would you like to speak to Article 44? Thank you, Mr. Moderator. This, my name is John Nyan, and I speak to this uh, Warren article as the uh, President of Experience Hampton. I, um, I would like to ask a procedural, um, make a procedural request at this point, but also uh, ask the uh, moderator that I would be allowed to speak uh, after other speakers uh, with regard to this foreign article. The procedural uh, request is that we have uh, Mr. John Tinius uh, from the Galley Hatch, who's been in this community for many, many years. And he does not live here in Hampton, but has a very strong and successful business. So I would ask uh, for a vote to allow him to speak uh, to the group today. Sure. So uh, what we did at the beginning was we had already identified certain individuals who um, work for the town. We knew that they would be speaking on articles and you approved as a body um, the, uh, their ability to speak because uh, uh, they were non-residents. Mr. Tinius has probably spent more time physically in Hampton than a lot of Hampton residents. Uh, so uh, he certainly is uh, well known in the community and has spent a tremendous amount of time um, in Hampton. So with that, all those in favor of allowing Mr. Tinius to address the meeting, please raise your voter card, down card, any opposed. Uh, Mr. Tinius then will be allowed to speak to us. Do you want to speak first, John, or do you want to have Mr. Tinius speak? All right, uh, Mr. Tinius. Thank you all for the opportunity to speak to you today. Uh, since 1970, uh, we've been in town uh, and have enjoyed every minute uh, building um, a restaurant and other enterprises uh, that are on the uh, corner of uh, Lafayette Road and Winnicott Road. And my mother has been uh, really my inspiration. Uh, she passed on two and a half years ago to um, give me this kind of vision for 2020, uh, which is uh, what Experience Hampton is, has uh, taken on. And it's really a, a vision uh, to, um, in her words, she appreciated everything, every coat of paint that a fellow business put on their property, every window box of flowers, uh, Any time that the town did something to fix the roads, um, she was she was all about Hampton. Uh, loved Hampton, uh, wanted to make Hampton better. And as uh, in that vein, uh, in two, 2013, uh, I was on a study group uh, that had uh, been sponsored by the town uh, to review the center of Hampton, uh, not only from uh, the standpoint of safety, but in zoning, what kind of uses uh, would be allowed in uh, the different districts of the downtown. And part of that exercise was for the whole group of us, from planners, uh, 
uh, selectmen were uh, represented uh, and business people to actually do a walking tour of Hampton from behind Route 1 all the way down to um, basically from our street uh, up all the way uptown uh, to what almost to the bridge uh, going out of town. And it was really kind of a, an eye opener uh, as to see the town from a walking perspective as the residents see it every day and as the visitors see it. And we made many mental notes along the way. Uh, traffic flow, uh, parking, how to get from the back parking lot uh, into the town, uh, easy access, crosswalks, lighting, um, aesthetics of how the town looked and what the town could become, what, what potential the town had. And we noticed that there were a lot of things that haven't, have stayed the same. Sometimes that's good, things that stay the same. Sometimes you have to keep up with the times. And as a business that is continually invested uh, in Hampton, because we believe in it, and we believe that the, the residents appreciate it, and the visitors appreciate it, and um, there's, no, there's no better example than what's happened down the beach uh, with the state's investment and the town's investment and taking those bathhouses and the and that end of the beach and making it really a, a beautiful site. And what's happened is that the private sector has responded and the private sector has, has uh, developed down there uh, and upgraded. And you're now looking at a beach that's on the move and um, coming into this era. Well, 2020 has that same vision. And we've started with a small product, project of beautifying the um, access from the town parking lot to the, to the middle of the town by a nice lighted walkway that um, is streetscaped, as they say, uh, and um, is a nice attraction. Now we're looking at crosswalks uh, to better delineate them and uh, make them safer for people, the residents and the visitors uh, to cross across the street and can be very hazardous on Route 1. There's many other things in 2020 that we'd like to do. And Hampton has challenges. We have challenges with our sewer uh, lines that have corroded over time uh, and, you know, now need to be replaced. Uh, there are other things, uh, you know, in terms of drainage and upgrades to sidewalks, et cetera, uh, that would make Hampton, a lot, make Hampton nicer. And aesthetically, lighting is very, very important for a town and also for the safety of the town. So that's kind of where the impotence from 2020 came. And as experienced Hampton, as a group of us, we're all kind of united behind trying to make Hampton a better place to live, to work, and to visit. So with that, um, I'd just like to uh, recommend this warrant article. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tinius. Ms. Wilson. Mr. Moderator, I have a procedural question here, and you and I have discussed this because I did give you warning that I intended to bring this up, and I have shared uh, emails with you um, with Mr. Buckley's uh, comments. I have a problem with the way the article was submitted. Yeah, uh, I, we have, and for purposes of today's meeting, it's on the warrant. Right. Um, and um, as much as some could characterize how it got to be on the warrant as unconventional. Um, my understanding is it was legally submitted and it is legally appearing on the warrant. So to, your, to, to the body's um, uh, information, um, this article was um, submitted on the last day that it was allowable to receive petition warrant articles. After it was hours. received after five o'clock. Yeah. The question is, um, is there any time deadline on the last day that one can permissibly submit a petition warrant article? There is none, no time stated 
in the um, warrant. So it was received on the last day. It's been deemed to be timely, I believe, by the town attorney, Mr. Buckley, who's a counsel in the New Hampshire Municipal Association, mm -hmm. um, uh, felt the same. So I don't want to get bogged down on that. Right. I appreciate um, the, uh, the wrinkle, but we're on to 42, and I'd ask you to speak to its substance. 44. You've, 44. If, if you will, though, it seems to me, and I agree with what Attorney Buckley said and what you just said, apparently there's a 24-hour period for the uh, deadline date, but you and I both agreed when we spoke on the phone that it has been customary for a 5 o'clock cutoff. I would just suggest that the Board of Selectmen in the future make the conditions for submitting petition money articles very clear in that posting instead of just posting it for 5 p.m. Um, I'm opposed to the article. All right. Thank you, Ms. Woolsey. Point taken. Uh, Mr. Bridal. Once again, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Hopefully for the last time today. Um, I can guarantee that if you'd like. <laughs> um, you know, Budget Committee member uh, Mike Pierce said earlier today that 30%, 37% of this town's citizens are 55 and older. 40% uh, is a big number. I often, uh, a couple years ago, said that I was the future of this town. And uh, having seen those little kids come up here and talk, I, I, I realized I've gotten a bit older and that they're the future of this town. But currently, as the town states, Almost half are 55 and older. And I stated earlier uh, in the sewer article, uh, Warren article, that there are some adult communities that live downtown. Um, a lot of our citizens uh, that, that need our support or help live downtown. I look at the vision that Experience Hampton has come up with and some of the conceptual designs that they've uh, shown up here. And what I see is ease of access for uh, elderly people. I see ease of access for future generations um, to enjoy the downtown area. Um, there's a lot of promise in this vision um, to make downtown Hampton a destination and not just a pass-through. Um, Experience Hampton has done a wonderful job in the past, and I'm sure I'm, there are other people that are going to talk about what has been done. This is a vision that truly encompasses the spirit of, of the revitalization of downtown Hampton. And I, I really encourage um, the growth that this group is taking. I am in full support of Article 44, and I ask you to do the same. Thank you, Mr. Monterey. Thank you, Mr. Bryan. Uh, Ms. Withy. Thank you. Diane Withy, 36 Alexander Drive. Um, I am also a member of Experience Hampton and am in support of this article. Um, it is my goal to be the finance chair for this project and in doing so look for um, as many federal funding and state funding as we can get um, in support of this project, namely the CDFA tax credit program um, and other federal funding programs for transportation enhancement, corridor planning and such. So as soon as we develop a plan, which means we understand all the costs associated with this project, then I can proceed further in filling out applications for grants. And that's what I intend to do. So thank you. Thank you, Ms. Whitney. Mr. Preston. Hi, <clears throat> Bob Preston, 339 Ocean. Um, before I say anything, I want to thank uh, the moderator for doing uh, a very difficult job and making it look very, very easy. So, appreciate it. Good job. I'm a member of the uh, Hampton Beach Area Commission and Experience Hampton. And we spend a lot of time on the different organizations trying to do good things for, for Hampton. Because this is our town and we love it. We, we're all invested here, you know, in, in many, many ways. A minute ago, we heard that you know we might have done something that it appeared to be underhanded by submitting something late. Well, for us, it was just a good idea that we didn't think up soon enough. Hampton is our downtown, but 
we might take it for granted, but every day thousands of cars come through here going up and down that road. And if we can take the downtown of Hampton and make those improvements so those people stop and go shopping or have dinner or maybe decide to live here, I think that's better for all of us. Now, Experience Hampton's going to pay a piece of it. We're going to, we've worked hard to do what we want to, you know, to get where we are and other little things. But this is the next step for a, further in, in John's mother's vision. So if we can take, keep working on what Desi calls our two miracle miles and keep making them both better, I think that we'll all be better off. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Preston. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Buck Frost, 17 George Ave, Hampton. Uh, I am a board member of Experience Hampton and uh, obviously support this, this article. Um, I grew up in town, lived here my whole life. Now my wife and I are uh, raising our two children here and we've spent many, many days in downtown Hampton. Um, to see the improvements made, um, obviously I was gonna uh, compare them to the beach like Mr. Tinios did. The improvements made at the beach, you can see the drastic changes on how that improved the area. I think this is equally as important. Um, I've had the pleasure of being on the board over a year now and let me just tell you that the folks that I work with on the board uh, work very hard to put forth really good ideas to improve this town in a very cost-effective way. Um, I think every single one of them is dedicated um, and hardworking and very smart to handle this, this, uh, this article the way they have, to look at the best ways to do it with the best interest of the town at hand. So um, we look forward to your support and um, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bros. Ms. Martin? Hi again. I'm Diana Martin and I'm here speaking to you as a board member of Experience Champion and also as a town employee. Um, our committee started by bringing back the parade, but our committee has also now grown and with that came the birth of the 2020, um, which also became the birth of public-private partnerships here in town. And what our committee is trying to do is just do things that are good for the town and especially right now the downtown area. So this is being the third project that we're trying to complete. In 2015, we worked with the town to build the walkway next to Greg's Pizza. Pizza. This walkway is not only a safer way to get to the businesses from the parking lot, but it also beautifies the area of the downtown. In 2016, we started a lighted crosswalk project, again with the help of, uh, uh, again, to help with the safety of the citizens crossing Route 1. Um, but it also is aesthetically pleasing to look at. Um, we are hoping that to continue our efforts and our public-private partnerships with the town on this project and make the downtown in the, of Hampton more pleasing to look at and to add to the improvements of the downtown area. So we're hoping as a whole that everybody will be in favor of this project. Thank you, Ms. Martin. Mr. Nye. Thank you, Mr. Moderator, again, and I'll try to keep my comments uh, of uh, new comments uh, based on everybody else's comments Appreciate to, to, to move this forward. Um, I do want to talk directly about the warrant article itself, whereas it was a decision by the Board of Directors of Experience Hampton to really focus in on this public-private partnership. And that is why you see uh, $30,000 that will come from Experience Hampton as a matching uh, amount to support this warrant article. There are a number of things that uh, we need to do before we go to our next step and to continue with the assistance of Public Works uh, to continue what we call the complete streets com concept, which also is included in the complete strategy of the town and the Public Works Department. So that, that's one thing. Another thing that I think is important, if you go back to that slide for a minute, uh, one of the things that we have noticed uh, and, and one of the things that we have talked about is how do we work with the town, with their assistance, and beautify downtown. If you look at the picture on the top left, that's the town today. 
and even that picture doesn't do the, uh, the, the service of what it really looks like. Within one quarter of a mile, there are 24 telephone poles. A quarter of a mile, 24 telephone poles. Part of this uh, Complete Streets model is to look at ways of how we could either um, move those telephone poles or bury the utilities underground. We have been working with Unital and other uh, utilities that own part of that those telephone poles, and we have been working very hard to try to figure out a way of how we could move those telephone poles or bury them. Part of this design request, this $300,000, along with adding other design services that will benefit the Public Works Department, part of this cost of figuring out how much it will cost to bury those poles or to relocate those poles. Because every, as, as Ms. Withies, Mrs. Withy said, before we can do the applications to federal government and state, we need to give them a number of what it's going to cost. This engineering detailed design service will give us that cost. And that is why uh, we're asking for the 300000 And as I mentioned at the Budget Committee in, in my closing remarks, that we have no intention of coming back as an organization to the town asking for more money to finish this project. This is what we're asking the town, and only this. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Nye. Mr. Rice. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Fred Rice, 15 Heather Lane. I think it might be hard pressed to find anybody in the town that has been more a part of improvements, trying to improve our downtown than, than myself. I, when I ran for the Board of Selectmen, uh, my main thing was the rebuilding of Lafayette Road. Not many people wanted to do it. Uh, we finally got it through. We held off on it. We had the wisdom to hold off on it because the school needed money to expand center school. And we held off for a year before we implemented that so that the school could have the money. I think that was judicious use of our funds. Um, we're now looking at a, an organization called 2020. Uh, it reminds me of a thing called Vision 2000, which was set up and chaired by Al Brandano, who ran Brandano's restaurant where Hagen's Grill now is. He spent the better part of 10 years trying to get improvements into this downtown, and they never, ever occurred. He met more resistance along the way from the people in this town than you can shake a stick at. The gazebo. I spent four years of my life getting that damn gazebo put in. And it took criticism before and after. Now everybody seems to love it and it's a part of town. But it took a long time to do it. It was a $120,000 project done entirely with privately donated funds and in-kind work. Had not a penny of town, uh, town money into the thing. We did studies. While I was on the Board of Selectmen and afterwards, there have been studies and discussions about parking in town. Uh, we looked at that in great, great detail. Um, when you talk about, one of the things we want to do with the gazebo was take out those two parking spaces right on Lafayette Road. No, those were sacred parking spaces. You couldn't take them out. It would have made the gazebo area a lot nicer, but people were, were really, really against it. Uh, the, the parking places, I noticed on the, the uh, drawings up here, the parking places in front of Morelli's would disappear. Those are sacred parking spaces, and there are a few people in town, if they can't park their pickup truck there, when they go in to get their newspaper and get their uh, can of soda, uh, they would really come after you on that. Uh, the, the parking spaces in front of uh, the Thai restaurant right now, those are now diagonal face-in parking, and uh, if you're careful the way you park there, you can get a horse to land on your car. But now th this plan pr pr wants to take those away and make it parallel parking in there. Well, the big problem, I know that you've had discussions with the merchants in town, but the last time that this was discussed in any detail, and it was a lot of detail, the merchant said, we don't want to lose a single space because we don't have enough parking, and it's a vicious circle. We can't get more businesses into the downtown because there's no parking. People won't come down and shop there because there's no parking and there aren't enough businesses. And it, it's, a, it's a circular argument. So I, I'm, I'm not against this project. I'm not against the concept of it. 
but I have some very real concerns. Oh, another one that I back very, very strongly was Mr. Tidius's T intersection at, at Winnicott Road. I think that was a dumb move by the town not to do that. It was an idea whose time has come, and it, will, it still will yet. But I have concerns about this one. I don't think that parking has been adequately addressed. I don't think that there has been any coordination whatsoever with the Rockingham Planning, uh, uh, Rockingham Planning Commission uh, regarding the Route 1 corridor study, which is trying to find four lanes of traffic, not a four-lane wide four-lane street, but four corridors of traffic from Maine to Massachusetts. Right now, we have the biggest congestion in town, right in the middle there. We have more diesels sit there and burn fuel and contaminate our downtown than any anything else. This does absolutely nothing to alleviate that. There's been no coordination with that study, which is still ongoing by the Rockingham Planning Commission. So I have concerns about it, and I would be, I'm, I'm very concerned that although I know the good things that Experience Hampton does, and I support it 100%, by the way, in the, in the uh, spirit of full disclosure, I'm not a board member like all of, almost all of the other speakers uh, of Experience Hampton, but I, I'm a little concerned that a private organization is going to put up 10% and ask the town to put up 300 grand so they can go get a study done for the town. I would much rather see the Board of Selectmen initiate this as a study to be done for the good of the town and the public works director run this thing. Not, and it be initiated from that end of it, not from the end that it is right now. So uh, I think there are a lot of things that have yet to be discussed. I think they can be discussed without spending money and get a lot farther down the road um, and, and get a lot farther ahead than Vision 2000. There have been at least two other initiatives since then that have tried to improve the downtown. They've been improved by the selectmen, and nothing has happened. Uh, so I, I, I would be very reluctant to support this until some of those questions are answered. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rice. Mr. Pierce. Thank you. When we, Mike Pierce, uh, 84 Lock Road, when we heard the presentation about this at the Budget Committee meeting, which was at the last minute because it was submitted at 7.45 or whatever on the last day you could submit a petition, which we all thought was against the rules. Uh, we hadn't read it or anything, but we had it explained at a reasonable length <clears throat> at the public hearing for the Budget Committee. And the thing that scares the daylights out of me is if they decide to bury the electric lines, from my understanding, that could cost in the millions of dollars just for two or two or three blocks of one street. And, I, and they want to take the money out of the road fund? Well, that's fine as long as all the other roads are in perfect condition in Hampton, but I don't think anybody here can say that they are. And we don't want to deplete that completely with some one, two block little exercise in spending money. I don't have any problem with trying to make the downtown look more attractive. In fact, I was involved with one of the uh, surveys, or whatever you want to call it, uh, where we looked at all the downtown. We walked around, like Mr. Keating has said, and uh, I have no problem trying to make things look better downtown whatsoever. And, but when it comes to spending that kind of money out of the road fund, that to me is the road should be taken care of first before we decide to bury phone, uh, electric lines. He said there was 40-some poles in one little section. Well, I can imagine if you're going to bury that, that's going to be a terrific cost for somebody, okay? And if they don't get the grants, then it looks like to me they're going to try to take it out of the road fund. And I'm not for that at all. And if we're going to do something like that, then everybody else is going to say, where's my share? Why don't you bury all the lines, electric lines on my street? Like we've heard from the west side, and Mr. Bridal will verify this, they've been wanting sewage on the west side for 100 years. And, or almost 100 years. And if he lets this go by without getting his sewage, then we know that what's more important, buried lines or sewage. So, I mean, I'm just saying that we got to look at the big picture here. I have no problem with making downtown look better. That gas station on the corner of Winnicunnett and High Streets, a real, I mean, on the corner of Winnicunnett and Winnick, and that Lafayette Road is a real eyesore. We haven't taken care of that yet, and that's probably chicken feed compared to two or three million for burying the lines. And the next question would be, if we bury the lines, 
who's going to pay to connect all the businesses to those lines are buried? I'm sure Unitil won't volunteer to do that. Unitil's not going to do any of this for the cheap. They're in the business to make money, at least pay what their costs are by the public, by the PUC. So I think when we're looking at this, we've got to look at it very careful. Once we open the door, we may not get it shut again. So thank you. I'm not supporting this one minute. Thank you. All right. We have worked on this article uh, for an extended period of time. We have three potential speakers here. I'm going to limit them to one minute apiece, no more than a minute. Mr. Jacobs, Mr. Page, if you want to be heard, Mr. Jones, go out to the crowd to see if we're all done on uh, Article um, 44. But please confine your remarks to a minute or less. Uh, just for clarity, the Public Works Department is in support of the, the Warren article. Uh, we're always in support of good proper planning ahead of trying to rush into a project. Um, I have to say that working with um, Experience Hampton, Hampton has only been a very positive uh, uh, effort to date with respect to the uh, street cr crosswalks and uh, sidewalk at Greg's uh, Pizza. My dilemma and, and the reason why I wasn't, if you will, the uh, original writer of this particular Warren article is uh, in balancing all of the issues that I currently have, and you've heard a few of them today, um, it, it's hard for me to keep uh, coming to the table, if you will, with one more project. It's not to say it's not val valid or, or, or needed. It is. Um, because sometimes, as the other speakers have alluded to, things have gotten swept under the table. Things have not uh, got the attention that they need. And I think it's a good, valuable project. I like to see the money ahead of time. Uh, it, it would come and be under the uh, auspices of the Board of Selectmen to uh, allow me to expend and only under contract. So it, it certainly won't be wasted. It will certainly be accounted for, and it would be used in a wise manner. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jacobs. Mr. Uh, Larry, can I take words to Mr. Bridal instead? I'll step away. Certainly. Thank Mr. Bridal, uh, 60 seconds. <laughs> well, first of all, Mr. P.S., I'm big enough to speak for myself. So, uh, However, this project, why would you ever do something or why would you ever propose something without having an opportunity to look at it first? An engineering study first. You have to have that before you can do it. Yes, we've seen pictures up here. But those are just those. The engineering study will tell us that. That'll tell us how the parking should be. From a point that what somebody may just look at it, but also what's best for the town. And I think it's, it's up to the voters. Let them choose whether they want to do this or not. You know, Mr. Um, Fred Rice got up and spoke a num and said a number of times that we've talked about doing downtown. Well, I'm 58 years old and lived in this town my whole life, and we've been talking about it for 58 years. Now let's see something get done. Let's see something get done downtown. If, if this will tell us what the cost is going to be. Experience Hampton has said that they are going to raise the funds. Yes, we have the, the highway grant fund, but we're going to have to spend that money on that highway once we do that sewer anyways. You do the sewer and the water, you're going to spend that much money to repave that road and do it right. So why don't we wrap that all up in a big bow and find out what's the best for the downtown area and how we can move forward. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bridal. Mr. Jones. The last Warren article of the day, and I, my heart is warm knowing I agree with Fred Rice. We do that at least once every year. 10% of this initial funding is coming from a private entity who, of course, will actually drive the whole thing conceptually, while we, the, the, the taxpayers, fund 90% and have a minority say in what's happening. That seems a bit like a, kind of an upside-down uh, partnership to me, whether you call it public-private or not. It doesn't make me feel good. There's a lot of things wrong with this article. Bottom line is you're going to commit $300,000 and he's looking at a $4 million project ballpark from, from nine in his own mouth. $4 million for what? One block? We're talking virtually one block, $4 million bucks. Don't know, please. Thank you, Mr. Jones. All right, are we, I want to go out. I know Mr. Kravitz is here, but I said uh, earlier that we were going to take a uh, sense of our meeting. Are we all set on discussing Article 
44. If you agree that it's the time to terminate discussion on Article 4, raise your voter card, down cards. All those who want to continue to speak on Article 44, raise your card. Uh, we have terminated, uh, finished discussion on Article 44.